Hi everyone, Matt here, and today we are continuing on Psycholonials. When we last left off, we had started chapter 6, I believe. Yes, chapter 6 of 9. Practice of Delegation. was chaotic but swift. Terrified locals stormed the docks, pushing each other closer and closer to the water, but mindful not to tip each other in. The polite people, decent enough, you always thought, and terribly deserving of being forced to become a prisoner to a seeding, no, to seeding summer colony, which is why you went to so much trouble to orchestrate a well-oiled evacuation machine. All told, the vast majority of the evacuation took only a few hours. By the time the sun was setting and boats were returning from their round trips, only a handful of people still waited on the piers. And when the boats came back from their drop-off, many of the weighing locals were a little puzzled to find that the boats weren't returning empty. They were always filled with new groups of well-armed people, jumping onto the docks with gusto and scaring into the neighborhoods and disappearing. Not running away from the danger, but right into it. With every boat full of locals dropped off at ma the Massachusetts shore, your people always had another squad of recruits from the mainland ready to jump on board and head to the island. He continued on like this for hours, back and forth across the, so the sound, where the population at the beginning of the day was around 10,000. Found head count after a near total of evacuation was 13,000. Your false flag maneuver simply replaced the entire population of the island with rabid jubilites, and then some. The new recruits remained faithful that the crisis posed no danger to them, and was merely a powerful act of pranks, and they would keep coming well after the evacuation too. There was no need to bother with the pretense of renting Airbnbs anymore or keeping a low profile. The new residents of the island began occupying the houses vacated by locals, along with the large supply of empty summer homes. No form of authority existed to stop you anymore. Collectively, all of, all of you are the authority. The only thing left to do is wait and see how this authority will be challenged by the government once it becomes, once it comes to grips with how badly it just got bamboozled. But in the meantime, not even your most cynical antis can dispute the obvious. This island now belongs to you. Fortunately, it will be some time before you're healthy enough to appreciate your conquest, let alone consciousness enough. Or conscious enough. Your dear friend Abby now struggles to manage the aftermath of your bold decisions. Z, I don't know if you can hear me. You have to get better soon, okay? If you didn't make it, I'd be lost. I don't think I could even go on. People are already looking to me for answers. I don't have the slightest idea how to handle this situation. The news is going insane about it. And my parents are losing it. I don't know what to tell them. I'm just ignoring them for now until I know what your plan is. I don't even know how... How are you going to follow this up? I doubt people will believe the bio attack was real forever. There are always... There are... There are already a lot of questions about it. What happened next? Why have all the people tried to come back and, like, send the military this time? Mostly just... I'm so worried about you. Please don't leave me. I'd be so devastated. Okay, I'll be back to check on you soon. Your clown ring is downstairs waiting for orders, so I guess I'll tell them something. I don't know what yet to protect the island, I guess. I have no idea what else there is to do to even do at this point. Feel better. You 
climb up before you address Z's inner circle. Ring 3, as you've heard them referred to before. You've never interacted with any of these people at all, and you don't know what to say to them. But wearing the paint seems like the right thing to do, for the sake of appearances. They will be looking to you for leadership now. Hide everybody. Um, I guess none of you have ever heard from me directly before, have you? Well, I'm Apple Pie, as I'm sure you know, but you can just call me Abby. I just made my clown name for fun. It was never supposed to be a serious code name or anything. Z is obviously wounded and very sick, so I need to make sure everything is running smoothly while she recovers, which means... Well, I'm still not sure what that means. Sorry, I didn't expect having to do this, and I don't really have a plan yet. But what we do know is clear is yesterday Z cleared out the entire population of the island with a really crazy stunt. And we don't know how long that can last before authorities can catch on to the uh, crank. So I think we all need to prepare to keep the island safe from that happening. Which means having all your people, like the many Jubilites under your command. I'm actually not sure how it works. There's like a hierarchy, right? Like you all give orders to subdivisions of clowns and such. So you need to make sure they're all set up to defend against whatever it might be. Invasion from the government? Also, I think we need to keep j the messaging up. Just make sure that everyone on the mainland knows it's not safe to try and come back. Whether that means keeping up the ruse of yesterday's attack, or maybe something else. Anything to deter, pe to deter people from wanting to come back because I think we've gone way too far to go back to normal, right? It seems really messy, and we just have to make the best of it. I'm sorry. I'm really overwhelmed by all this. You deserve better leadership than my incoherent babbling. I'm doing my best. Ahem. First, may I just say, what an absolute honor it is to be serving you, Secretary Appleby. Secretary? Yes, that is our formal that is your formal rank within our organization. You are the Secretary of Jade I assure you we have nothing but the utmost sympathy for the difficult position you are in. Everyone here is fully aware of the role you traditionally play within the Jubilite movement. You are how sh how sh shall I say more of an inspirational figure? Hands off secretary who remains uninvolved with the tedium daily operations. That's our role. And we are all beyond thrilled to be playing it. So so I completely understand if you find yourself in an awkward position. Uh, actually, yes, thank you for understanding. Um, Joe Kuleen. It's my clown Sona name. <laughs> We all go by clown sonas in this organization. No human name is allowed as a matter of policy. It's strictly for security reasons, you understand. But we will all be more than pleased to refer to you as Secretary Abby as a special exception, if that is your wish. Oh, yeah, thank you. Or just Abby is also fine, lol. You got it, Abby. It's so great to finally be speaking with you. Can I just say what an admirer of yours I've always been? Long before the rise of Supreme Honk Effects Z. Supreme Honk Effects? Of course, ha 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 ha. It is quite the title, isn't it? But look at all that she has accomplished. Accomplished. It has been a remarkable achievement, and I have absolute certainty that there is not a single Jubilite on this island who would not die for our leader. Thanks. Well, okay, that's nice to hear, I guess. I don't think we need anyone to die for anybody just yet. I think we just need to figure out how to get this crazy situation under c control. Naturally, Secretary, or Abby, I mean, 
You may not favor the spotlight, but it is this clown's humble opinion that your management instincts are every bit as sharp as our supreme honky faxes. But may I make a modest recommendation? Sure. If you find yourself overwhelmed by the tactical situation, I would strongly advise you to consider the practice of delegation. In fact, I would be happy to personally take the reins of implementing all follow-up strategies which are necessary to secure our territory and keep our adversaries at bay. Just give the order and I'll take care of everything. Oh, you would? Well, that actually does sound very helpful. Thank you, Joculine. It will be my pleasure to serve you and the Supreme Honky Fix. Now and always. Okay, so can you start with all that, like, right now? I have some other things I really need to do. I feed my poor horse. He's probably been so worried since I had to leave suddenly the other day. Yes, by all means. I will have all essential operation put into motion immediately. By the end of the day, you will see. There is nothing to worry about at all. Now go feed your beautiful horse. All Jubilites can say the health and well-being of... Archie... Bishop David Hasselhoof to be of paramount concern to our mission. You gave my horse a rank? It's a joke, of course. No, we did not. But we do like to joke around us clowns, don't we? Oh, well, yes, that was actually pretty funny. Okay, I'll go do that then. Thanks again for, your, for the help. You walk away feeling relieved of administrative responsibility, only to realize you now have time to dwell on all your other pro problems. You are terrified that your friend won't recover from her critical condition. No matter how successful her, sub her subordinates are, you doubt you'll ever be able to shake the feeling that this island could be invaded by the military at any moment. Your parents are pissed, not only at your involvement in the succession, of their favorite summer colony, but they now realize they've been played as well. Your mother has caught on to the fact that she was being scammed by her lover, and your father seems to understand you've been playing him for the fool as well. They want their money back, but obviously that's not going to happen. You'll have to think about how to play it. You don't think your mom knows she was catfished by Z and Percy. Maybe you can try to convince your dad that you were Sincere about the Bitcoin stuff, but you were being scammed at by the same guy that your mom was. That seems like a plausible out, but it would just involve more lying, and maybe it's not even worth it anymore. Maybe Z was right, and you're just better off giving up on the idea that parents like this are worth having any relationship with at all. You take another look at the news. It's pure madness. You and Z are everywhere you look when it comes to trending topics online and coverage of recent events. The upheaval around the country is accelerating, and all the footage you can find now features way, way too many clowns in the gatherings for your comfort. No matter which media outlet you turn to, it's always, it always seems they'd rather point their cameras at a bunch of unruly clowns and focus on the real issues originally propelling the civil unrest. And yet, it's hard to deny that the gradually col... Colisca... That works. Colisking rhetorical message in this clown ruckus ties into Z's political agenda, which she, she so assiduously itemized in her manifesto. This movement, which once seemed nothing more than a bunch of anarchist gestures opportunistically, making mischief now more closely represents open revolt against capitalist and imperialist state power. More police stations are falling in small pockets of territory are being captured by jubilites. But nobody knows where this is going, or what the vision is for the direction of the movement without the guidance of their supreme honk effects, otherwise known as your best friend. You need to.
I'm dreaming again. Don't make me wake up this time. I want some answers. I have no power to wake you up. The sickness inside you keeps you asleep. What do you want to know? Last time I dreamed of you, you said I was doing well, but doing well at what? Shouldn't you answer that? What is it you believe you're actually doing? I don't know, a lot of shit. Fighting for survival, and you're still alive, are you not? I guess, then you're doing well. This is some cagey bullshit. I think you know there's a lot more going on here than just surviving. You're the one who gave me all these ideas, after all. Yes. So, why? What do you even want out of this? You mentioned survival. Perhaps this is my aim as well. Inevitably, we are all... We all die, of course. Even entire civilizations die. So doesn't it stand to reason that part of one's quest for survival is propagation... Propagation? of everything one identifies with? And if a civilization is to survive beyond its time, doesn't it need to concern itself with such propagation methods as well? So you're saying your society on whims if a is dead, and this is your way of keeping it alive? Aside from the means of communicating my culture to you, what is so unusual about this? There are many nations on your planet which have engaged in similar practices, including the one you have begun to challenge. Practices like imperialism? Conquest can be achieved in so many ways. Often the most effective ways are when the conquered don't even fully grasp that is what's taking place. Does this ring true of the nation you were born in? I mean, if you're saying America does lots of sketchy shit all over the world. But also has this, like, vast, hemogenic, hegemonic, monic, words, influence over everything through culture and economics without even needing to invade all the nations on Earth. Yeah, I know that. It's some kind of basic shit. The situation you describe surely happens in many deliberate ways, but easily just as mu but easily just as much of it must happen automatically. Yes, as a logical and effortless extension of the great power and influence your nation has. In other words, it is natural. It's only natural for a person or civilization to instinctively seek out ways of propagating itself to assure its continued survival. How many ways has this happened on your planet that you already know of? Methods of colonialization or it's the, may involve sending ships across oceans to occupy foreign land. They may involve wars, cultural or Asia, the displacement of large populations, or open genocidal practices. But all instances of these events on your planet have resulted from the evasion of one continent by another. It is not also conceivable that your planet could be subject to the same forces from beyond your solar system. I don't mean to alarm you by raising the possibility. The truth is, Earth has nothing to worry about when it comes to the threat of a hostile interstellar invasion. There is no planet in the galaxy that needs to worry about that, because it's impossible. It is? Yes, space travel is too difficult. The speed of light cannot be exceeded, or even safely approached. Our planets are locked apart from each other forever, until they all grow cold and die. So it sounds like you're saying, if one planet wants to conquer another, they need to use a different method than just sending a bunch of spaceships over and shooting lasers at everybody. Yes, that is true. So are you saying that's what you're doing here? I am only saying this. Of all that is about to take place on your planet, there is only one person who is responsible for the actions that will bring about these changes. And that person is you. 
Wait, don't go. Wait. Two weeks later. After a couple of weeks in bed, you managed to beat the virus. Still weak, and you still can't put any weight on your wounded leg. But you finally feel well enough to leave Abby's house and get back into in the action. Speaking of action, even though you cannot you could hardly post any content due to being sick, your brand continued its relentless march forward. D69 Clown Boner 420. 1,125 posts. 38 million followers. Following one. An evacuation stunt, now widely regarded as a maneuver you orchestrated for the purposes of seizing full possession of the island, grabbed the world's undivided attention as the flashpoint for a credible route. Resistance movement against the United States government. The ensuing media frenzy and global political discourse has only served to racket up your follower account precipitously. Words. If you were in better health, you'd have been. You'd have been able to appreciate your outrageously snowballing fame a lot more. But as it was, you could barely manage to lift your phone on most days. Today, you're just happy to be able to get out for some fresh air. It's your first in-person debriefing with Rain 6 since you've been sick, or ever, for that matter. Our previous meetings were done online while you were all keeping a low profile. But now that you control the island absolutely, there's little need for such discretion. Ring 3, under the delicate supervision of Jokilin, recently re reallocated a nearby country club for meeting purposes. You've just arrived and are ready to hear the full report. You're more than a little anxious to learn what your organization has been up to. Well, you've been in recovery. The fuck is all, all this? I'm getting the full 12 clown salute, huh? Well, I'm flattered, but at ease, bitches. I'm alive and long past due for a proper debriefing. Abby's been keeping me updated on stuff while nursing me back to health. But now that I'm on my feet again, I think it's time to get serious about our full tactical situation and what comes next. Abs, you want to leave the meeting and take it from the top? Well, me? Sure, you're the secretary of Jape after all. Haha. <laughs> so I've been told... Uh, so I've been told. Okay, here's what's been going on since the evacuation. Um, ugh, it's been so fucking much. Let's see. Well, there was the power outage scare, which lasted, what, a day or two? Then that got resolved somehow, and... Abby, this debris thing fucking sucks. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't even know you were going to ask for one. I just thought I could chill here and listen to you guys. Ah, uh, excuse me. Secretary Abby, it's perfectly all right with us if you, you relax there and listen. And with all due respect and reverence to our supreme honky fix, Z, first of all, may I say what an honor it is to finally be addressing you in person. How relieved we all are to see you recovered. Yeah, sure. What are you trying to say here? You're... You're, uh... Chokulin, right? Yes. Wow, you remembered my name. Oh my god, I'm so... I'm sorry, Supreme Hunk Effects. I'm just... Please don't call me that. It sounds fucking ridiculous. Uh, yes. Of course. My apologies, Z. 
I'm afraid I'm losing my composure due to my feelings of admiration for what you have accomplished here and... Cool, we all accomplished this though. So what's up, Kuleen? Are you trying to volunteer to give me a debriefing instead of Abby? Yes, if that's okay, sir. Don't call me sir either, but yes, it's okay. Whenever you're ready. As Secretary Ariapi has already touched upon, the evacuation strategy has been an overwhelming success. Virtually all locals have been displaced from the island due to your brilliant and daring act of pranks. They have been replaced with tens of thousands of jubilant loyalists. While the media debate whether or not it was a hoax, we made sure to secure the island. We've taken over all major facilities with a militia presence, including the airport. We've also promoted the claim that there are now thousands of bombs deployed all over the island, rigged to detonate if the government ever reclaims the territory. So they're free to try if they like, but the consequence will simply be the total obliteration of all this valuable property they are claiming we have stolen. Yeah, I heard about the bombs. They hit, they hit that part of the story a lot in the media. It was a nice touch. Thank you, sir. I mean, see, it was my idea. But there aren't any actual bombs, are there? Oh, there are a bunch of real bombs, for sure. For the sake of taking photographs to prove it, it wasn't completely made up. As well as detonating a few of them as a warning, if it ever comes to that. But yes, you are right. There are far from thousands. Well, that's good to fucking know. Color skates. <laughs> Meanwhile, the U.S. military presence has been increasing. A fleet of Navy ships has massed around the island, presumably to function as a blockade, preventing more ships from arriving. This has stemmed the flow of new recruits coming in, but more importantly, it resulted in an unofficial embargo. Soon we'll need to consider how to cope with supply shortages, unless we can figure out how to disrupt the blockade. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I'm working on it. And the power situation? Right. As our secretary mentioned, we had that unfortunate power disruption. Electricity, as I'm sure you know, is not gener generated locally on this island. It's supplied from the mainland through underwa two underwater cables, gradually putting us at the mercy of whatever the energy company decides to do, or worse, what the federal authorities talk them into doing. So, as the textbook maneuver goes when it comes to any hostage crisis, crisis, which the feds are surely viewing this as, albeit on a much larger scale, they attempted to shut off the power. People on the island were understandably quite upset, so Secretary Abley kindly put out a distress call, and the, fe and the bla backlash by our fellow Jubilites was rather intense, to say the least. Many forms of pressure were put on the energy company until they relented and restored power to the island. Pressure? Yeah, everything. You name it. Threats, bribes, mass gatherings around their facilities and offices. They quickly realized it wasn't worth it to antagonize us like that, and even if the feds were insisting on it. It turns out our movement may have more le leverage upon such institutions than even most government agencies do. Of course, the tremendous financial resources at our disposal make things like this go a lot easier. Really must commend you and your Secretary Abbey for accumulating so many assets with such a skillful implementation of pranks. Can't imagine anyone else in the movement has been as successful with the technique as you have. But then, haha, <laughs> look who I'm talking to here, the inventor of pranks herself. Whoa, okay, let's slow down here. It's good you all got the power back on, that was important, obviously. You say you're also spending money to make shit happen? Yes, we have been. All with Secretary Abbey's approval first, of course. I have also been recommending a significant allocation of resources to a newly formed marketing wing of the Jubilee movement. I'm not sure if you've been tracking the mares. What am I saying? You've been sick in bed, but you may want to take a look. Our fall around the world has exploded since your phenomenal evacuation strategy, combined with my marketing methods. I didn't notice, actually. The numbers have really gone haywire. I guess getting worldwide attention for conquering an American summer colony will do that. 
and uh, whatever shit you're doing with the marketing. I'm sure that's good too. How much have you been spending on it? Oh, many. Millions. But don't worry, according to Secretary Abbey, now represents a minuscule proportion of the movement's total assets. Yeah, I thought it sounded okay. We have so much now, and we've hardly done anything with it. What could it hurt? Yeah, this is all totally fine. Actually, it's very good. It transitions nicely into the next section of the manifesto. It does? I was gonna start distributing it after the back stunt. I got shot in the leg and then knocked on my ass by their owner. So the advanced pranks this shit got delayed. But it really sounds like you got a head start on some of it without realizing it. So what is it actually? Well, once you get completely insane amounts of money from your marks, like we've got now, you just keep rolling that money over into new schemes. The money makes everything easier at that point. Doing stuff like you already just did to solve the power issue, you apply, you apply pressure. You can buy people off. You use op operatives on the mainland to twist people's arms into doing shit, or even both at once. Mostly, this was meant to be applied to more financing schemes. For instance, we run through our trusty old political donor list, find some big names, target their money guys, like their financial firms or whatever, and look for weak, spot, weak spots. Nerds who move the money around, buy and sell stock, whatever it is they do, and just apply pressure. Wave dollar figures in front of their faces that they aren't used to being paid threaten them with consequences they're in no way equipped to handle. You million in bribes, you have to pry loose a few billion in assets there, and you have a good return on investment. Oh, haha, uh, yes, this makes so much sense. It's so exciting that I was unwittingly anticipating the next phase of our operation. Yeah, basically. It is the next logical step, isn't it? Well, not to me. I had no idea that's where this was going. It sounds really ambitious. So does taking over an island, doesn't? So does taking over an island, doesn't it? Yeah, which, I mean, that's been pretty dangerous too. And now it sounds like you're pushing a campaign of, I guess, stealing from many, from as many rich people and companies as possible. Yes. I'm not opposed to it. It's just. My parents are one thing. I felt like Dono, like this was some, this was sort of a fun game. But this, are you sure we can handle all this? Secretary Abby, not to worry. Remember, that's what you have me for. It's all per It's perfectly all right if you didn't have the same natural foresight into advanced fanctious, which I did. I'm here to complement your position of command to expand upon on it to make you even more effective. We all have our skills, don't we? Supreme Hunk Effect Z, or oops, just Z, I mean. She is a great visionary, the glorious clown mother of all that we celebrate here on this island, whereas I would like to see myself as a very skilled administrator, someone who can handle all that boring stuff with money, logistics, planning, and whatnot. And you, you're good at, mm, well, you're, you, you have an incredible social media presence. Oh, and you're super pretty, and you have a beautiful horse. You see, we all have something to contribute. Each of us in a, is like a puzzle piece that fits into the big picture. And if it pleases you, Z, I could simply carry on with what I've already been doing so effectively. I could oversee these advanced prank pranks initiatives you were envisioning. Just say the word and I will begin building teams to carry out your orders immediately. So, you want to be in charge of advanced princes, huh? Hmm. Fuck it. Why not? Yeah, why not? Ugh. I'll publish the chapter soon, but this material needs to stay internal for now. Can't be too public about it until we have a lot of plays in motion. Don't want to tip our hands too early. 
Get back to me tomorrow when you have a plan. We can talk about it more then. I gotta go home and lie down. My leg's still killing me. Have you ready to go? I just find your face funny. Later. Good to get back to our expensive wine dinners again. Just like old times. Uh, old times, yeah. Shit, it's only been, what, two months? Christ. Yeah, well, feels like fucking years have gone by. Are you sure you're going good? Are you, fuck. Are you sure you're good to be sitting out here like this? You can always go lie back down if you're not feeling well. No, I'm good. I need to, like, force myself to get back to normal. Things have held up pretty well, but to be honest, the vibe of the scene has gotten pretty weird in my absence. Yeah, that new girl is, like, a lot. I'm trying to remember where she even came from. Didn't you appoint her to, to ring three? Yeah, I did. But she kind of quietly moved up the ladder after some positions got shuffled around. And I hardly remember hearing anything from her at all. She was mostly quiet and just like idle, waiting for instructions like most of the others. Now she's this chatty fucking Kathy all of a sudden. Well, she stepped up when you got sick and I had no idea what to do. She's actually been a huge help actually. A huge help actually. It might have all fallen apart if it were only up to me. I'm not saying she isn't doing you useful work. Of course, she wants to overachieve now that she's got the spotlight, and the stuff she's doing will probably undeniably help the movement. Like with the advanced pranksish, pranksis shit. I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't go out and shake down a whole bunch of money from a bunch of new suckers. I'm just saying my alarm bells are going off with her, and I'm not sure why yet. I... I just have a spider sense for these things. It's probably not good for your mental health to get too caught up in paranoia. I think she's most likely just a nice girl who got inspired by all the stuff you wrote. Now she's trying really hard to impress you, that's all. I can kind of relate to where she's coming from. Oh, so that explains our, our friendship, huh? you just been trying to impress me with your sexy wills and charms to end up to end up second in command of my tedious clown empire. Paul, yes, you figured out my master plan. I saw you in that restaurant waiting tables one time and was like, now there's a girl who's going to cause an Nantucket Island to succeed, to succeed from the union with a clown-themed social media campaign. You sure knew, know how to play the long game in betting yourself. As a high-ranking official in my impromptu paramilitary circus for years, just for your shot at getting that lesbian kiss out of me you've always been after. After. Yeah. Limo, stop. Please don't mess with me like that. It's so mean. Look, I'm done trying to put moves on you, I swear. I'm just trying to take care of you. You've been in such bad shape and got yourself in so much trouble. Well, we both got ourselves in trouble and need to take care of each other until we can, like, survive this? I know, I'm just joking around. I'm always just joking. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I just joke around when I'm stressed about stuff. You don't... You... You just need to relax. Don't think about all this garbage constantly. At least you, at least take a night from, at least take a break from it all, from it all at night. Other people can worry about the heart, fuck, words. At least take a break from it all at night. Other people can worry about the hard stuff for you now, for you now. That's what all your obsequious, obsequious 
fits the word. Opposite cliches, cliches. The fun he helpers are for. Here, let me top you off. Yeah, I don't know if I should drink this. I'm kind of fucked up on pain meds. Oh, yeah, good point. Well, more for me then. Well, I don't remember you being this much of a wine mom before all this. Must have done this to you, d didn't I? No, I've just been so stressed. I've never been through anything in my life but the last couple of weeks were like, you sick and dealing with the government, my parents and the fandom and the media going ballistic over this. I had to find ways to cope. I'm sorry, God. I should have thought it, it through what this was going to be like for you. Don't be sorry. I've been right here, watching how all this unfolded. Take. You got fucked over by cops and all you wanted to do was fight back. That. Words. Characters. You got fucked over by cops and all you wanted to do was fight back. And that, like, got all mixed up with your new project. Probably no one out there can possibly understand the truth about why it why you felt like you had to take it this far. But I do. Yeah, that's always been the problem. When you're under attack by murderous assholes with all the power and laws on their side, you'd roll over and die, run away or whatever, or even fight. But once you start fighting, the question always is, when do you even stop? And then you realize you can't. Because once you start, you establish yourself as a threat to them. And they'll stop at nothing to put you down. So it turns out you can't stop fighting until the threat is completely wiped out. Or they all just keep coming. Then the question becomes, who's they? Is it just the police? Or who the fuck do they work for? Work for? Turns out they is really the whole system. All corporate and state power. If they constantly show they want you dead if you're willing to fight back at all, then what choice do you even have but to keep fighting to the death? Yikes. But yeah, you're totally right. I can see it now. It's not like I even won this taking over a whole island. That wasn't really in the blueprint. They forced my hand though. I'm just tired. Well, the Brona really wiped you out. I know. I mean, mentally, too. I spent the last two weeks in, in and out of a COVID and pain med fog. But that day I got shot. Some real serious shit happened that day. Which I had barely any time to process with my rational brain. Yeah, you lost a lot that day. You found out about your mom and Percy. I felt so sorry for you, but haven't known what to say. Do you want to talk about it? And which one? Both of those topics are two completely different conversations. Either one you want. I'm not prepared at all for whatever the conversation would about my mom would be. As for Percy, I don't... As for Percy, don't know what to say. It just sucks. I know you always like to tease him, but it seemed to me you actually really liked him. It's okay to mourn for a person you cared about. I don't think I... I liked him like that, though. It's more complicated. Isn't he still on your unlock screen? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like you did like him like that. Abby. Percy was my soldier, and he died because of me. He died for this cause. He died because I sent him down this road, and he never even knew what I was signing him up for. Your soldier, huh? Okay, if you insist that's how it was. But just remember I'm your friend, and you can talk to me. You don't have to run away from your feelings forever. I'm not running away from shit. It's the truth. It's true about all these people here, and all over the world now. They all signed up for something I started, which could end up very badly for everyone if I fuck anything else up. But it's not like I can just stop. The fate of too many people depend on me now, and the forces we're attack and the forces we're attacking here legitimately are quite evil. 
so I can't shake the feeling that this is all important work to be doing, in addition to just being a necessity of survival. And then my insane dreams keep reaffirming this. Dreams? Yeah, they've been getting more intense. You mean the same kind of dreams which inspire your manifesto? Yes, I had some more while I was sick. They're more vivid than ever. He speaks to me more clearly now. Who? Ryotis. The mythical clown god my brain made up who is probably fake, but now I'm not even sure about that, so maybe I'm going crazy. Or maybe it was just the disease wrecking havoc on my mind. I'm sure that's what it was. I don't think you should start drinking your own Kool-Aid on this floor. I mean, it's neat and all, but I'm not that serious. I just think it's my subconscious talking to me. That's very lucid stuff. All this material I'm shredding around. It's like a vision from some other place. And it feels like it all has some intense need to spread itself throughout the universe. Like colonizing the world, overriding our various nations and cultures, but without any actual invasions. Instead, it's more like it's being channeled through me from a place we can't even comprehend. So you mean like imperialism? Isn't that bad though? I thought your records... No, I thought your manifesto was on record as saying that all sucks. It does. The kind that's been practiced on Earth. And if aliens sent ships to Earth and conquered us, that would be bad too. But I think this is something different. I have no idea if it's good or bad really. But if it catches on with everyone, it turns out to be what, cur what cures this planet of shit. Like... Injustice, economic equal inequality, inequality, and all that. Could it really be that bad? I don't think I'm qualified to answer that, but it sounds a bit like a, rationaliz a rationalization. Maybe the kind that more traditionally in traditional imperialists have used to justify expanding their own influence in the past. Like they could have said. Like they could have said, if only we invade this poor country or that one. Just think of all the boons our advanced society could give them. New science and medicine or whatever. Or new forms of morality because our religion is better than theirs. Stuff like that, you know? Yeah, you could be right. I gotta stop thinking like this. Like these are anything but weird dreams. Or telling myself this is all any deeper than just some story I wrote. It's just a story. It's just a story. Ah, it's driving me crazy. Just stop thinking about all your clown lore for a little while. Just rest. You're still recovering, remember? No, it's not even that. It's the clown girl, jo Joculine. Still gnawing, gnawing at me. Where do I know her from? I have no idea. To be honest, there are too, just way too many fucking clowns for me to keep, even keep track of anymore. And they all have clownsona names and faces, and sometimes people even change to different ones. So who knows who is that new? So who know? So he, So who even knows who anyone is anymore? Wasn't that the point? Your manifesto says it's all about the like malleability of our identity. Like, take total control of who you are. Nope, nobody else gets to decide. Not your parents, or the government, or whatever, right? Man, still, just have such a weird feeling about it. You should just try to sleep soon. Let me clean up, then I'll help you upstairs, okay? Yeah. Something occurs to you. It was that tattoo. Haven't you seen it before? Then it hits you. You open your now massive list of haters. You scroll all the way to the top, where the elder Zantis are. The one you click on is the very first, actually. Joculine couldn't really be...
pitching. It is. It's her. This was the first bitch who canceled you. Chapter 7 of 9. I never even stood a chance. likely record more tomorrow but yeah that's the end for today um if you like the video like it if you want to see more of my content subscribe and if you haven't seen the pre previous uh videos or episodes or whatever you want to call them and this is your first time tuning in make sure to go watch those so you don't spoil the rest of the story for yourself anyways that's all for this time and have a that is all for this time. Have a good day and do what you do best.